Okay, so today we're going to be doing a new workspace for, for Notion marketers. So let's start with project database. That's the most common database that we would create. So you can go ahead and build this at the same time as I do, starting from scratch and leaving no steps out. So first we'll need to add projects. So let's say we have something like uh, Honda and Toyota and Nike, Adidas, Donald, Subway, Logitech, Delgado. All right. So we've got these different companies. These are projects, so basically these are clients that we have or a project that we're working on. Now, this is the status bar. I'm going to delete it, actually, because I want to do it from scratch. So, we create a new tab, a new column, call it status. We'll change it to a select property. So, these different properties can be either, you can have select or multi-select, but for this we'll choose select. Make it a bit smaller. And then we'll add the different things we want to add here. So that would be, for example, active. Then we'd have on hold, potential, for clients that we're not sure we're, get, we're gonna get soon, complete, projects that are done. And that's pretty much it, and partner. Sometimes you partner up with someone and it's different. It can be a partner and a client at the same time. I have this type of situation, so that's why I'm adding it here. So then we can have these, for example, this is active, active, and this one is on hold. And now we want to sort them by status. So we'll choose here the sort option and we'll choose status and we'll do it by ascending. So all the active are going to be on top. And then depending on the position that you have here, they'll be the second one. So I would do partner as the second one. Um, yeah, second one, then potential would be before the complete. Complete would be at the end. On hold is here. Okay, now let's change these colors like orange. This would be red, uh, green. Partner would be blue. And complete would be gray. Oops. Complete would be gray. Okay. There we go. Now, we want to add also new columns. So these would be things like, for example, tasks. We'll change the property after, but uh, we'll have something like website or app, depending on what the client has, if they have a website or app. Then we'll have clients. And so these are going to be linked to different databases, though, which we'll create uh, soon. Now, all right, let's do the next next step so we'll go back so i forgot to mention first thing you create a page i called it new notion because i don't want it to be mixed up with my my existing projects database that i already have and um, I'll show you a quick glimpse of what, what it looks like completed so you see these are different different projects that i have okay so so first you create a project page so you call it project then inside the project page you have this database just to show you hit forward slash then page right page and then once you get inside, you would click table. That's what you would do with the projects page. I forgot to show you that, but that's that's what you would do. And it would give you this, a page with a database, but you can't add anything to this page other than this database. If you would do something like this instead, and just add an inline database, you would have a table here, but you could add things here. But for the purpose of this, the projects page is going to be just a projects page and that's it. And a lot of the databases would be like that. And there's a, there's a use for that, but it'll be a bit too complex to explain right now. So let's go back here. Uh, we'll do this page. So this is going to be the client's database. You name it YT. Always add symbols before my, my name. So that way they, when I have a lot of pages, I can search through them easily. So this, this is the client database. So let's say we have a client called George, one called Ahmed, that's me, and then we have one called Tony, uh, Mo, could have one called Eric, Ragnar, Thomas, Thomas Shelby, <laughs> and I think that, that'll be it. We could add someone else, who, Bjorn, I guess. These are shows that I watch by these names, uh, you might know these names. Here we have the client's database, and what we want is to add this database to the other database. So how we're going to do this is by simply going back here. See, we had this one client, and we're going to change the property type to a relation type. Now this type is going to be so YT. That's the purpose of my, my symbols. You see, it's easily found now. And now I want to choose clients. I'll choose this, and here it is. Now, let's say Honda, who's the client. Let's say it's Mo. And then Subway would be Ahmed. And then we have Ragnar. Choose all these different clients here. Tony, 
George and Eric. There we go. Now clean this up. Now we've got all these clients set up with these projects. Let's show you what this looks like. By the way, if you want to do back, you can just hit the control and that symbol next to the P. There's like brackets, like square brackets, these ones. So if you do this, it's going to be control and this it's going to be forward and control and this is going to be backwards okay next the the client's database sorry for that so in the client's database as you can see this was automatically created since we added the other one in the project the relation uh, column it added one here automatically it has to be done if you delete this one then well you shouldn't delete this one if you don't want to see it though what you can do is just hide it then you won't see it okay and then undo with Control z by the way and so here I like to change these names because they call it related to YT. I always call them rel YT projects, the name of the page. Rel is for relation and it's just uh, simpler because you have a lot of these columns all throughout different databases and you want to keep the name short. So I just call it really rel. Okay. Now you can make it smaller as for space. That's why I do this. Save space. And now these different tables here, let's see, just want to add this to my other screen so I can uh, remember what type of type of columns I've created for these ones okay so we've got status obviously as, as always which is going to be a select property now the status is going to be pretty similar you're going to have active you're going to have potential on hold complete and we would have you know, that's pretty much it and the purpose of having this different as the other one because what we could do you see is we could simply pull up a, a column here from the roll-up property and then we would choose in the roll-up property would choose to select the select a relation any relation in this in this table but right now we just have this one the projects relation okay now when we choose this we have now a property name or a property client property status task whatever different columns we have in the projects table so remember in the projects table we added columns called client which is this one the status which is a similar one as this one and task and website but now what we want is the status so we want to pull up the status from that other database so when we choose this as you can see all of the the statuses of the different projects have been pulled up here so you see Nike, it was potential. Elgato was complete. Subway was active. I'm oh, sorry for that. Uh, Subway was active. If you go back here, we'll see that these are the same ones. Subway is active. Elgato is complete. Nike is potential. So you see it's, it pulls up information. So I can pull up any information. I could pull up the website as well if I wanted to. So let's start filling these up. Uh, Subway.com, Logitech, then we have Toyota.com mcdonalds elgato.com and adidas there we go now we could pull these in the clients database but no much point now why we're pulling these different why we don't do this actually why i wanted to create a new one not do this because you can have a project for example that has more than one client so let's say let's just do that actually let's say project subway and mcdonald's have the same owner so let's let's see this one it's ahmed so where's mcdonald's there it is so mcdonald has ahmed and by the way if you want to create a new client from here you can you just you can either go to the clients page or you can simply add one here like for example new client star just so we can see it easily create a new page in in new client sorry create a new page called new client in the youtube clients database and we do that and here it is now we can choose it okay so we're gonna just leave it as ahmed and then let's say adidas is tony and nike as well is tony and so now if we go here you see that eric doesn't have any projects let's sort that so it's cleaner sort it by status and so you see here we have this client that has two different projects and this says active and partner potential and complete but it's not really true you see you can have a, a client that has a, a complete status but just for one project so you can be finished with nike and then it's going to say tony nike is complete but it's not complete so that's why we don't want to pull up this information we want to create a separate one for this database so as i said these ones will just click anything 
And we'll just copy this and paste it all over here. There we go. Now this will make it a bit smaller. Here, what we want to do now is uh, add maybe some different some different columns. Like for example, we'd like to add the contact point of contact. Sometimes you have the client, which is in this case George for Elgato, but you won't communicate with George. You'll communicate with someone else, but he's the one that pays you and he's the one that makes the big decisions. But you need to maybe send the, his social media specialist uh, some content or you need to send him whatever, a strategy. So here we'll add the different people. So for example, Tina. And so Tina would have a phone number, which would be 514-830-55679. Okay. And then you could add also an email. Uh, but we won't add everything here or we could but we also have an email column that we could create which if we click afterwards abc at gmail.com you could automatically send just by clicking the email also you could do a phone number which would auto automatically call if you're on a on a phone or or on your laptop but you need a phone app okay we'll avoid this though and we'll just add the email here abc at tina Elgato.com. Okay. Now, now that we've created what we needed here, won't really add much here. Gmail.com. Eric.abc at gmail.com. We'll leave it like that. We'll go here. Uh, I like to add icons to my to my different pages because that way it'll be simpler to, to find. So you can write, for example, person and it might find you something. I like to use this silhouette for the client's databases you can also change it like this by the way so this i like to use construction i like to use this sign for the projects database and so that's it now here we're, what we're going to create is a task database so check mark a task database and so actually no we'll delete this because what we want here is a full table so let's say the task is okay, let's just do keyword research then we'd have something like write copy for landing page track analytics then we'd have something like uh, create landing page let's see what else could we do optimize website pages competitor analysis and one last we could do something like for youtube video okay now, these different tasks will be added also to their respective projects. So here we'll create a column called projects and we'll relate it to the projects database. There we go. Now we can choose different projects here. So Garo, this is for Logitech, this is for Adidas, Nike, and Honda. There we go. Now, these different databases will now be added also. These tasks will all also be added here. Now we created a tasks column earlier, but that's what not that's not what I wanted to do. I don't want to, I didn't want to add tasks. You see here we have tasks, rel tasks, and here we have number of tasks or tasks left actually. And this my friends is going to let us actually we got to choose the, the right property so we'll choose a roll up and we'll choose the existing uh, database that is you see we can either choose client like we did earlier or we could choose tasks and he, here you see it's going to show us the tasks but that's not what we want to see we want to see something else here it's saying show original which is this the original the the name of the database which is the the first column the first column is, is a special column it's not like any other column you can't change its property it's actually uh, a different type of, uh, of column it doesn't have as many features it's like a header basically and so here we want to see for example show unique values count all and you see these would tell you different type of things so let's say count all so you see now it's showing us how many tasks are left in the task compared to the to the the project so for for logitech we had two tasks right and that's why it's showing two subway we didn't add any tasks subway we didn't add any tasks so there's zero and that shows you how many tasks you have left for each project which is very interesting to know um and so that's pretty much it for this what else could we add here uh, let's let's check my original task uh, client database here yes i do relate this to sops but this is going to be in another video because it's, it's a pretty long subject 
So <clears throat> we could add one that's called SOPs. Now, actually, SOPs wouldn't be added here. It would be added to the tasks database. And so, deletion. Oh yeah, but we didn't create it. <laughs> okay, so we need to create a new database here, page. Then this would be yt SOPs and create a table. Now, SOP1, SOP2, SOP3. Go back here, tasks, select the property type, hit relation, choose the SOPs database. And now, here it is. We can choose one of these SOPs. And in SOPs, I like to have templates, but we'll do that in a separate video because it'll take much longer. And we'll also go into the different templates I create for my tasks database. So for example, let's say I have a task, which is a discovery call. So the discovery call, well, the discovery call, most likely I'll do it in the in the projects like I usually do, but I've been thinking of changing the way, the way I do that. So I'll think about it before the next video and uh, we'll see soon. But basically it would be, Let's say here we have discovery. Well, actually, no, it wouldn't make sense. Let me just do it like I usually do it because I haven't thought about it too much. So yeah, we have a new project like Adidas, for example. Let's, let's just do one that's active. And here we want to create a template, which is right here. But as soon as you add something here or you click or do anything, this template will disappear. You can always access it, though, by going here. But right now there are none. Or I can also create it from here which is going to do the same thing. So let's call it uh, red. And then when I go here, you see, I can choose red. And so now we're going to add, edit that template. We're going to call it discovery, discovery call. And so here we'd add all the questions that we want to ask a client, a new client, every time we have a, a new client or we open a new project actually. So that's important because you don't want to be asking out of the head questions every time you want to have calculated questions that are strategically thought out and that you've you've actually tried and seen that are useful when asking to a client. You don't want to ask them too many questions and you don't want to ask them unuseful questions. So next time, that's what we'll do. We'll continue this process and these videos will be Notion tutorials for digital marketers. And that's all I'll be doing here. I'll be creating a full workspace for digital marketers and it'll be quite a few videos and well that's that's all we're going to do we're going to create templates we're going to create a lot of different things that manage the the different collaborative aspects of a workspace in notion so i hope you guys like that hit the like button subscribe if you like it we'll see each other next time peace